everyone, James again with TFB TV. Today on TFB TV, we are doing a review of the allegedly most powerful handgun on the planet. That is the Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum. You can see, guys, this is nothing to scoff at. But what's really neat about this particular Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum is it could be yours. We are giving this exact one away to one lucky TFB TV subscriber. So if you go to the description, you'll see that there's a link to a poll for a giveaway. Of course, I have to say on YouTube, YouTube has nothing to do with this giveaway. Uh, they, they're not sanctioning it. This is an unofficial TFB TV only giveaway that we're putting on to say thank you for reaching 500,000 subscribers. Very cool of Smith & Wesson to send the Smith & Wesson 500 to us to give away for 500K, right? This giveaway is for subscribers only, so hit that subscribe button, then scroll down in the description to find the link to enter the drawing. If you're a Patreon supporter, you get additional chances to win. So don't forget to go to Patreon, check us out, support us, guys. We do giveaways monthly at least. In fact, every month right now, for the past few months, we've been giving away two Blue Alpha Gear belts to Patreon supporters. So you get a lot for being on TFB TV's Patreon, and you can also get our TFB patches, which you cannot buy. We don't sell them. They only go to Patreon supporters or giveaway winners. Anyways, if you're underage or you can't own this gun in your state or your country, we are also giving you the option to win 500 bucks. So if you'd rather just take the $500 cash, if you win, just let us know. We'll wire you the 500 bucks or you get a lot better deal if you get the most powerful handgun on the planet. This thing, MSRP, is $1,300. Anyways, we are reviewing the Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum on TFB TV today. So let's go over the technical specs, and then I'm going to take this thing out to the range. The Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum is a massive gun, weighing 72 ounces are roughly four and a half pounds. It needs all that weight in its construction to support the raw power of the 500 Magnum round. The 500 Magnum round can generate more than 2,500 foot-pounds of pressure. To give you some context, a 357 Magnum generates around 500 foot-pounds of pressure on average. So this gun is five times as powerful as your average 357 Magnum. Smith & Wesson invented the 357 Magnum. They invented the 44 Magnum. So it only made sense for them to up the game one more time with this X-Frame gun. The X-Frame 500 Magnum is, of course, larger than the N-Frame 44 Magnums. In fact, the X-Frame cylinder is twice as big as the 44 Magnum or the end frame cylinder, and it's proof to 71,000 PSI. This one holds five rounds. It's got an eight and three eighths inch barrel and a very crisp single action trigger weight of four pounds. It has a fixed compensator and interchangeable sights, and the gun is constructed out of satin stainless steel. Specs very fitting of the most powerful handgun in the world. Let's start with 300 grain arms core hollow point that I got from my boys at Ventura Munitions. God, I cannot believe the freaking size of this gun. It's absolutely absurd. Can't wait to see how it shoots. And by the way, you guys might be seeing slime everywhere. I actually just filmed a guns versus slime video that was pretty fun, and the conclusion was firing this 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. I'll try to remember to post a card, um, or at least a link to that video in the description or at the end of the video. Let's give this 500 a whip with 300 grain hollow points. I'm using targets from my boy, Ivan, over at Kit Badger. Well, look at that. I mean, I'm a little to the left. I'm like, I'm shooting like an inch or two to the left, but those are those three of those rounds are touching each other. This does not recoil all that badly. Uh, I'm, I'm very shocked. You can see it's got a pretty robust muzzle brake here at the front, and that definitely helps sap up some of the recoil. But um, this gun also weighs a ton, and I guess that's one of the main drawbacks is when you're holding it out there, 
even if you're working out them delts, even if you're a delt guy and you got some good shoulders, I mean, you get a little shaky full extension with this big old hog leg and hold, trying to hold it out there and stay on target is actually a little tough, especially when you know that there's a knock coming at the end of that trigger pull. But I mean, it shoots. I mean, that, that's four on top of each other. In my opinion, Smith & Wesson grips can be hit or miss. These are fantastic. They're the rubberized kind. They've got the finger grooves. They really eat up some of the recoil too. They probably could have put a slightly more robust grip on here, but I don't think it's necessary. Really, the recoil from this gun is not bad. I've got a 44 Magnum Smith & Wesson, the kind with the, uh, the two and three quarter inch barrel. That's a Smith & Wesson Model 69 Combat. And this thing is way easier to shoot than that, that pocket size, virtually pocket size 44 Magnum. Sights are good, but nothing special. You've got an adjustable rear sight that's got a little half box, and then you've got just a black front sight blade. The trigger's excellent by any measure. Very light, and there is no take up, there's no over travel, nothing. It's, once that trigger moves, that hammer's coming down. Pretty nice. All right, you guys ready to be accessories to Mountain Dew and generic grocery store knockoff Mountain Dew violence? Got more of these 300 grains. Woo! Ho, 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 ho. Wow. All right, let's try some of Ventura Munitions' own 500 Magnum 440 grain flat nose. Now that's just pretty. Woo, so these 440 grains are a little bit more severe than the 300 grains. There is a lot more recoil from these 440 grain rounds than there were from the 300 grain hollow points. By the way, five round capacity in this gun. So it's crazy. I'm shooting a little to the left, but this thing is bananas accurate. And I have noticed this a couple of times where the, uh, the ejector is not grabbing the rims on the casings completely. It's only happened two times, but uh, the, for whatever reason, um, the ejector is not grabbing all of the rounds every single time. But look at this target. Let me flip the camera around and show you. So, not very close. This is how far away we are from that target. Focus. There we go. Look at that. Pretty dang accurate. I mean, they're all staying on top of each other, and I'm not really trying all that hard to, to shoot tight groups, but it's giving them to me. All right, gang, so final thoughts on the Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum. It's an excellent revolver, at least for the purposes that I've used it for today. I didn't shoot a ton of ammo through it, only a couple of boxes, but mission accomplished for Smith & Wesson. First of all, the trigger is outstanding. As I said, the single action trigger is incredibly crisp. No creep, no over travel, no nothing. As soon as you get a little bit of backwards pressure on there, boom, um, you're off and running. So excellent single action trigger and the double action trigger is pretty good as well. At least in revolver terms, it's fantastic. And I'm really curious to know if one of these could really withstand, you know, a thousand rounds, 2000 rounds of 500 Smith & Wesson, if anybody were ever so inclined, because that is such a powerful round. I'm curious as to whether or not it would shake this thing apart, but I gotta say, it locks up tight like a bank vault and it's built like a tank. So it wouldn't surprise me if the 500 Smith & Wesson 
could handle a lot of abuse. Now remember, I've had a couple videos on the channel lately dealing with bear protection, grizzly bear protection. This would be an excellent option. This is obviously a lot stronger than 44 Magnum. It's the most powerful production pistol, at least according to Smith & Wesson. And it's a relatively portable package. I mean, it's a comically large revolver, but if you need it for backpacking, camping, whatever, you could put this in like a leg holster or even carry it on your hip. This thing is more than adequate for grizzly defense. And for that matter, I think if you had a Fiat 500 chasing after you, you could probably disable it with one or two rounds from the 500 s and Now, I shot a couple of different types of ammo through it today. The 300 grain that I shot earlier was actually very mild and very easy to shoot. While the bigger 440 grain Ventura munitions ammo, which was a flat nose round, which would be ideal for something if you're going to carry it in grizzly country. You don't want a hollow point, but something with a lot of penetration, like a flat nose round. 440 grain flat nose coming out of this thing hot. But all in all, between the weight and the muzzle brake, this thing does a pretty good job at taming this wild ass 500 Magnum round. Thanks a ton to the best ammo retailer in the business, Ventura Munitions, for sending us the 500 Smith & Wesson. They make their own 500 Smith & Wesson, so if you guys are looking for inexpensive 500 S&W rounds, I say check out Ventura Munitions. I also want to say thank you to Blue Alpha Gear. We were talking about Patreon before. If you guys would go and sign up at Patreon just a dollar a month, I'd really appreciate it. As you guys know, we've been demonetized on YouTube just because we do firearms content. So whatever support you guys could give us is really helpful. But if you go there and you sign up, then you can enter every month to win one of two blue alpha gear belts. We give two away a month and it's only for Patreon supporters. Not a ton of people on there and I think the drawing last month there was only about uh, 50 people that signed up for each belt. So you know you had a two percent chance of, of winning. Um, so it's pretty good. In any event, um, look for the sign up for the raffle in the description below. And guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. <laughs>